Yeah, this is your typical spark tester, and um, these check for spark versus no spark, but they don't really check to see if you got an adequate spark. Um, there's other spark testers out there that are adjustable that can cost about $60, $70 or even more plus shipping. This is one from uh, Oregon Power Equipment, the guys that make the chains. And uh, you see right there, right? Oregon, right? It's a 42 87. It's like, hey, it ain't even 10 bucks, man. That's what I paid for it. But you can see the gap that you got in the glass. Now, this thing is not adjustable. It's probably not something you want to throw in your toolbox. Seems like it's fairly strong, but I wouldn't throw it in the toolbox. I'm going to leave it in uh, this instrument box I got. You can also, you see how big that gap is compared to the gap on a spark plug? You can, you can actually take an old spark plug or something and bend the gap way the hell out there and make a gap about that big, which is about a quarter inch, and see if it jumps. And basically, this is like a no a go no go gauge. It's uh, for a strong enough spark. It's not gonna really tell you exactly what it is, but I got another gauge that tells you the volts. So, but this for depends on where you get it. You can get it for about nine bucks, but you might pay sixteen for it. But it's a lot cheaper than um, so many other gauges out there that cost sixty five to ninety bucks with the shipping. This checks for spark. But if you got a weak spark, it won't um, work under compression. A lot of times when you check these plugs and you ground them out, and you got a spark gap like 25 thousandths, like that's usually maybe 25, 30 thousandths or something for a chainsaw, it'll spark in the ambient air pressure, like no compression. But when you put it under compression, it's not going to spark. So a lot of times, you know that's a weak spark this will this will show this will flash when there's a weak spark this won't flash when there's a weak spark so I like taking the plug out and checking it because this way you can see you know it's easier to pull it over pull start it and stuff you can do it with the plug in there but I like just taking the plug out and grounding it out with this you can just plug it into the spark plug boot and just ground it out someplace this this one's designed to be plugged into the spark plug boot, and then this spark is plugged into the spark plug. But I always use a jumper cable, show what I mean. And you can see the uh, spark tester right there, real close up. Kind of zoom in. Use your shit focuses or what. And uh, give it a pull, a few pulls. You can see it sparking. That's cool, right? Now, you can also check to see if your switch works with the off position, like here, this thing. So if you flip it off, that should mean that, you know, that's, that'll check to see if your ignition switch is working. There should be no spark now. Flip it back on, clicked on. Should be showing up in that camera. Yeah, we'll flow, we'll show the other one. Here's the other one. I'll zoom in a little more. That yeah, should be about focus good enough. And you see that circuit sparks good, right? That's got a good spark. So that's like an under ten dollar gauge. It's probably good to have both these gauges because I don't know, maybe you know a weak spark might be due to something dirty, you know. Maybe the gap is wrong on the uh, where the ignition module is or something. It's a possibility. 
maybe there's something wrong with the freaking wire where it's screwed into the ignition model module maybe that's a problem maybe there's corrosion out here on the boot maybe the saw got you know maybe that's a problem so sometimes it's good to have one that shows a weak spark and also one that shows a strong spark but between both those gauges they're under 20 bucks so and between both those gauges you know that pretty much it's simple you know it's like they ain't gonna break as long as you keep them in a place where you're not gonna get smashed up on a heavy three pound freaking hammer and it's a lot cheaper than the fancy stuff and I do have the fancy stuff too yeah the fancy stuff is this thing this is an old Penske made in USA gauge but this will tell you uh, right here on this bottom one right here uh, spark output you know if it's putting out 30,000 volts or whatever and uh, but you know if you got a weak spark you might want to check your, your, your ignition wire where it's uh, you know the boot is um, you know right where the spark plug boot is um, could be corroded or maybe where it's attached to the wire itself because this the um, chainsaw wires the chainsaw ignition wires aren't resistor they're just a copper core inside so you know that would be another thing to check you know we would want to check your ohms gauge you know so like you put it on ohms like this is to set the ohms right here you would put it on your ohms right here you know with your low ohms and check check for continuity between the wire maybe with uh, a little bit of a pin in there because you never know maybe something's wrong inside the ignition wire if you got a low spark and um, you know that would be your problem so I don't know just figured I'd tell you that because uh, sometimes a low spark isn't necessarily the ignition module and it could be something wrong with the gap or you know between the magnet and um, you know the ignition module and the magnet on the flywheel it's supposed to be like 10 to 12 thousandths around the thickness of a business card that could be a problem too but you know you don't need nothing like this to check for you know just having a spark and having an adequate spark you just have uh, two gauges that are add up to about 20 bucks and they'll work.